I'm Lisa Curcio, and I would love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is Wednesday. It is March 8th. The year is 2023. We are streaming live right here on YouTube. I'm thrilled that you're here. Maybe it's your first time. An extra special hello to you. And if you're returning, I'm so glad that you've come back. Tonight, we're going to DIY an Easter card, but I got a fun fold for you that includes a partial die cut and a double gate fold. Fold. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited. But in addition to this being an Easter thing, which is what I'm going to use, you know you can use this thing for whatever you'd like. In addition to the one I have that I'm going to share with you, I have an alternative with a different color for you. Plus, I have four extra cards to share with you that are all comprised of the March Online card class. We'll talk about that a little bit more as we get going. All right, a couple things you need to get knowing about before we go started. Go forward. I'm very tongue-tied tonight. Let's start that over again. There's a few things I want you to know about tonight before we get started. First and foremost, you're going to want to snag that free project sheet. There's going to be a link down in the video description below when the live stream is over. Inside that project sheet, you're going to find pictures, cutting dimensions, supplies, and a template for tonight's card. You're going to want to make sure you download that completely free, no frills. In addition to that, we love to interact with you during the live stream or even if you're watching the replay. But in order to do that, you're going to need to log into your YouTube account, which requires your Gmail address. That's a requirement of YouTube, not of mine. And then I want to take a minute and make sure you know all about that beautiful name in blue off to the side, Gina Curcio Holly. You might recognize her surname. Gina is my daughter. She's also the sales and marketing director here at Lisa's Stamp Studio an avid stamper. If she's not here stamping with me live with you, she's there moderating and that's what she's doing tonight. She's here to interact with you and answer your questions and to provide links because there's just no way I can keep up. All right, now that I got that out of the way, let's go ahead to the stamp table and let's get started on tonight's card. All right, let's start with that trimmer. This is easy. I'm going to tell you the first time that you make it if you've never done partial die cutting. I do want you to practice on some scrap cardstock first. I love to have a template when I have a really intricate fun fold. And I hate to use that word intricate because it really isn't. This is a square piece of cardstock. It's eight and a half by eight and a half. And as I said, there is a template for you in that free project sheet that's available when the live stream is over. We're going to start by doing a score line down the middle and that's at four and a quarter inches. Now I love the paper trimmer. All the products you're gonna be able to find in my online store on my website at lisastampstudio.com. There's a ledge here at the top. There's also one at the bottom. This trimmer includes both the scoring blade, which is light, and the cutting blade, which is dark. And they navigate up and down out of the way so you can keep them on the track at the same time. Game changer, I absolutely love this. So let's line this up at four and one quarters of an inch. Remember, this is a square, so it doesn't matter where you start. And then we're going to score. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to turn this. So I'm rotating it once to the left and we're going to line this up at two and one eighths of an inch. And again, that template is going to be real helpful for you. And we are going to score. I want two and one eighths on this side. So we're just going to make this super easy and we're going to rotate the whole thing. So now we've got the other side two and one eighth of an inch and we're going to score. You know what? I'm so busy talking. I always want to make sure that I scored this in the right place. Yep, I did because I always have a backup just in case. Now I'm going to take my pencil because we're going to do a little bit of cutting away and I know that you all say how much you love when I use the pencil because it makes it easy for you to follow from home. So this quadrant here and this quadrant here we are going to eliminate. Now if you are not real precision streamed with your trimmer. Don't fret, just take your scissors out. Cut across and down and take those out. I am gonna use my trimmer just because I love it. So remember that two and one eighths of an inch. We're gonna line that back up. Here comes that cutting blade right here to the top. I'm gonna to drop the blade and I'm gonna cut down to that score line. Now I know you cannot see it, but there's a little mark here on the trimmer blade that indicates where it's going to fall, which makes it super easy. So then I'm gonna turn this now, and you'll recall we said four and one quarter, so I'm gonna line that back up. And all I'm gonna do is just basically connect the lines. So I'm just gonna come right over to here and cut, and that takes out that first piece. Now we're gonna do this side. Now you might be wondering, well, how are you gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna turn it this way, 
and I'm gonna work from the bottom up just to make it easier so I can see the dimensions here at the top. So once again, two and one eighth of an inch, and now from the bottom up, we're gonna cut from here right to that score line, and I can see it. And I'm going to turn, and I'm gonna line that back up in four and a quarter. And listen, if you don't wanna remember all the um, scoring lines, don't fret. Just look for that score line right inside the track of your trimmer, and you are good to go. And then this one's going to come down to here. Okay, so that takes off this one. Now we're left with this. That is all the cutting and scoring that you need to do. I do want you to remember that if you are not proficient with your trimmer, take your scissors and cut those panels away. The next thing I like to do is come up on those score lines and crease them. So I've got my bone folder here. So I'm gonna fold this in and I'm looking to align this and this to make sure they're nice and straight. You know, none of us cuts straight, so this is a great time to kind of shimmy up those ends to make them as even as possible. And we're gonna come over this. You may sometimes notice that you have a raised edge like I do here on the cardstock from the trimming blade. And that's a good indication that I have a very sharp blade. And that happens when you're folding in the opposite direction of when you cut. If that raised edge bugs you, just take your bone folder and just flatten it straight out. And that is going to compress that cardstock down so that little raised edge is not visible. Now this top edge is going to come down. Now you might notice a little bit of bulk here at the top because we have the gate fold on the inside. It's okay, don't fret. All you're gonna do is you're just gonna fold it down the best you can. You are going to have a sliver, about a 16th of an inch here that doesn't meet at the bottom. That's normal. And then you're gonna come over the top with your bone folder. All we wanna do is just reinforce those score lines. Now here comes the best part. We're going to use a label die, and you can use any label die that you want. And doesn't it figure that the one that I'm using just sold out last week? But that's okay. Stampin' Up! is getting ready for a catalog transition, and that's going to be on May 2nd. So as products are selling out right now, they're not replenishing them for two reasons. First and foremost, they're going to be retired if they're not being replenished. Second of all, Supply issues are still a problem. So if they're ordering products from another state or another country, they're not going to get here in time. So this die set is now sold out. We're not even going to go over that. It is listed inside your project sheet. It's called Seasonal Labels Dies. I'm assuming because it's sold out, that means a whole bunch of you have it. If not, any die will do. Now I'm going to bring in my stamp and cut and emboss machine. Now it's rather large in my camera view, so bear with me. Let me go lift it. I'm bringing that here into the camera view. Now you might notice some of this tape here at the top and let's chat about that. I want to anchor this die in place because obviously we don't want this moving when we're die cutting it. I cannot live without this. This is the post-it labeling and cover-up tape. This is not a Stampin' Up! product. It's not in my online store, but I linked it for you. And you're going to be able to find it on my website under shop craft room favorites. There I've linked products for you that I absolutely love to use here in the studio. And that's one of them along with this pencil that you all love as much as I do. Soft lead, terrific eraser. So I've ripped off some of that tape here and I leave it right here on the edge of my machine because I use it over and over and it's right at my disposal. What you're looking to do is you're going to symmetrically visually center the die. So I am looking here and here just to try to get visually even. And this die specifically has some bumps along the way. So that makes it easier for me to try to line it up. And again, none of us is perfect, so we're not going to go crazy. But we're going to tack it down so it doesn't move. So I'm going to add tape in several places here. And then I'm going to give this one more cursory look. And I'm like, yep, that looks pretty good. Now, obviously, when I bring in my die cutting machine, you're going to see that this will not fit all the way, will it? Because of the double gatefold. So here is your next tip. You want to make sure that you move these to the inside. So your gate folds are going to be closed. Don't worry. Now I'm gonna grab my platform. So we have here the basic platform, which is number one. And then you're automatically going to use this plate number two, which is when you're using a thin die. Now you can tell I do a lot of die cutting. So I flip that over to try to get rid of that curvature. And then you need one of your number three plates. It's a protective plate for the bottom. And then we have our paper and our die. We are going to close that gatefold here at the bottom. Now here's where the partial die cutting comes into play. 
This plate right here on the top does all the magic. So if you do not place this where you don't want it, it will not cut. So with the gate fold closed, I am going to start by bringing the majority of that plate down inside the machine. I am now going to line up the edge of the plate to the top of this double gate fold. Because remember, it won't cut because there's no plate here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to crank this through. It is not uncommon for your machine to make popping noises and cranking noises. That's all part of the mechanics. I'm going to pull this out. Let me move this off to the side. And now let's disassemble this so that you can see it. There's my clear mat. I like to flip it over and make sure that it's cut all the way through. And this is a great tip for you at home because every machine is a little bit different and that means your rollers are a little bit different. While it's anchored down, if you don't see that it's cut well, you can go ahead and put it right back through because you've got it secured. All right, let's open this up. And now what we're gonna do is we're very carefully gonna take off that tape. And I say carefully and here's why. I wanna reuse it, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. I find I can get about six uses out of each piece of tape. You can put them right back on your cartridge or of course on the machine itself. And then we're gonna remove the die. Now here, we're left with this. Now this is a matter of just trimming with your scissors. I do not use my die or my trimmer for this. I just find it so much easier with my scissors. So we're gonna work here at the bottom and work our way up. I find for me, it's easier to cut where I'm going versus where I've been. So I'm gonna start here with my paper snips and I'm cut right up there and that's gonna release this tab. Instead of trying to cut from here to here, flip it over and we're gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm using that score line as a guide and we're just gonna cut away. And now that has left us this. Isn't that the neatest thing ever? So cool, isn't it? Now let's talk about the way we're gonna decorate it because it's not gonna go like this when we're done. So let me stick that off to the side for just a moment. And I'm gonna bring in some scrap white cardstock and I'm gonna do some stamping. Now I'm gonna be using my black memento ink, which is always an indication to you that I'm probably gonna do a little bit of coloring. And keep in mind, if you have solid stamps, those work as well. I am gonna make mine into an Easter card. And there is a lot of discussion tonight about this stamp set and I wanna chat with you about it. It's called Easter Bunny. So darn cute. Now, you're going to see in the additional cards I have for you that I made some that are not Easter themed. So I want you to think outside the box because you can use this all year round. Now, this is also typically offered as a bundle, which means it has a coordinating die or a punch. In this case, it's the Easter Bunny Punch. The bad news is, guess what? So many of you have loved this. You sold out on the punch. And they are not going to be restocked until the middle of May. I know, I know. But guess what? I am going to give you some great tips tonight. You don't need the punch. And wait until you see my other cards because you're not going to need the punch. The punch is just an add-on. I do not want that to deter you. I've got lots of tips for you tonight. So I'm going to set that off to the side. Here comes that black memento ink. Photo polymer. I love it because you can see where you're going. The older I get, the closer my head has to be. So I'm gonna stamp that image here. So we've got our bunny and I've got my stamp and scrub just off camera. That helps me clean my stamps. One side's wet, one side's dry. Many people use a chamois. There's also some adorable Easter eggs in there. Keep in mind, you don't have to use Easter eggs if you're gonna do something a little bit different. And I also have a little blades of grass. Now wait until you see what we do with this. All right, so we're gonna start this one over here. I'm gonna do one, and I'm gonna come in next to it. Remember, photopolymer, and two and three. Look at, I didn't do it close enough. I'm trying not to get my head in your camera view, and it's not hard. It's really hard not to do that. All right, there we go. So three in a row. I like to work right over my project, probably like most of you do. Um, you get a better perspective of where the stamp is going to land. So I apologize for that. All right, we're gonna close this up. We are gonna come back to that in just a few minutes, but let's talk a little bit about this. Now, I wanna give you a couple quick tips about the coloring, because when you see my finished images, because I already have them done for you, you're gonna wonder how I did that. And for this, I just wanna zoom you in just a little bit closer so that you can get a better vantage point here. I am gonna use a couple colors just to kind of give you an idea of what, how I achieve the density of this image. 
Please keep in mind, although I'm using alcohol-based markers, you can use watercolor pencils on watercolor paper. You can use colored pencils. You can use dye-based markers, whatever makes you happy. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the bunny. Now, the dye, the, I'm sorry, the alcohol-based markers come in a combination. So you're going to get the light and the dark of the same shade. And this is petal pink. You see that cute little ear? Well, let's take that light one first. And let's add a little color here. So I'm going to add a little color there. But I went a step further and I added a little bit on his nose and I gave him a little rosy cheek. Now I know it doesn't look like much, but hang with me. I'm going to let that process a little bit because if you work too quickly, that alcohol base has not evaporated from the paper yet. And if you add the next color over the top, it will bleed. So patience is a virtue. This is the darker shade. And I'm going to come right over here and just give that a little bit of shading. And you can see a little bit of the color difference here. Now, the next part is the part you're really going to want to stay tuned for because I'm going to be giving you some tips about shading the image. So I'm going to be using gray granite alcohol-based markers. Again, light and a dark. They are labeled on the barrel. You will notice, too, that there's a line underneath the cap that delineates the size of the tip. That makes it super easy for you because if you like to get into those little tiny areas, this is the better area for you. I'm going to use the brush tip. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to work primarily here at the top. Now I like to use small circular motions and you can go around the nose and cheek if you want or you can go right over it. It's just going to mute the color. I also want to show you a little tip here about the ear. So I'm going to go ahead and color here and remember that alcohol base from that pink has already evaporated. So I'm going to come over it just a little bit and I'll go over this ear too, but I want to work here. You see that little scruff underneath his chin and down his chest? Well, I want to give you a couple tips about that. If you're like me and you know you want that area to be a different color or a different shade, oftentimes we wonder on how we can achieve that. So I'm going to give you a couple ideas and I'm not going to color the whole thing, but you get the idea. As the alcohol base begins to fade, you're going to see the color start to come out. The alcohol base in the markers will tend to make the paper look wet. That's normal. But I love alcohol markers because it's flawless. You're going to love it. This now is the dark. Now watch what I'm going to do. There aren't necessarily sketch marks in the image that the artist made to give you definition lines on where the dark and the light should go. So I cheat. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add a little bit onto this side of the ear and maybe a little bit here and a little bit here because I'm kind of thinking the light's coming this way. I'm going to go over his whiskers just a little bit and you see here around the scruff, now I'm turning the paper to make it easier for my hand and I'm making little tiny marks right along the outside of that. Once again, you need to allow that to process. If you don't, it's going to be a bleeding mess. I love to color. It's the cheapest therapy in the world. And I just love the results from the alcohol-based markers. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back now to the lightest shade. And I'm going to blend this a little bit because I don't want this to look harsh. So I'm going to come up here and I'm pulling the dark into the light. And right before your eyes, you're going to see that start to blend, taking out that line. Now, here on the scruff, again, I'm going to turn this. That always is a great tip for you if you're at home. Because what's going to happen, it's going to allow you to have a little bit better dexterity to your image. Now, another tip, this is just a Lisa thing. If you make small little circular motions over this and you don't cover all the areas, I want you to see what happens when it dries. Did you notice I avoided that little scruff area underneath his chin? I can go back over his little feet if I want to. Watch what's going to happen as this starts to evaporate. You're going to get natural highlighted areas. That's going to make you look like a pro where you didn't cover it entirely. I love to cheat. <laughs> I'm not a professional colorer by any means, but I have learned so much by using these markers. Now this area here, which I'm calling the scruff underneath here, I want to lighten it up even more because I want there to be a differentiation in the color. So this is where the color lifter comes into play. It is a colorless alcohol marker. Now it will do two things. It will move the color and it will remove the color. If you ever have a little boo-boo, I'm going to do this on purpose so you can see it. Watch here. If I were to go outside the lines there, again, you got to let it process. 
You're like, oh darn, that's going to show when I cut this out. Well, there's a way to get rid of it. Let's let that process for a minute and let's work on this area. Again, dual tips, you take your pick. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this on camera, but if I wipe it here, you might see that it's wet. Do you see that? That's the alcohol base. So I'm going to come inside here with small circular motions and I'm going to go over that little area on the scruff and down on his belly. And right before your eyes, you know what's going to happen? It's going to start to lighten up. This is a great tip for you because you can have one color and produce multiple shades using the color lifter. There is no limit to the number of times you can go over it, which is a fantastic tip for you. So you can always achieve what you're looking for. That little boo-boo, switch over to that chiseled end. Turn the paper so you can see where you're going. You're going to want to work outside of the mark because the alcohol is going to spread. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to work my way in. I'm not going to get too close to the outline because remember the alcohol is going to bleed and I don't want to lighten the area here on the inside. Again, this is allowing you to layer it. So you can see it's wet. It's going to start to dry. I want this lighter. So I can come back over this once again and allow that to lighten up. Now the rest of my image, literally these images here, I just colored them. Now let's talk about the grass. You're going to look at this and you're going to shriek, don't, because I've got some great tips for you. I wanted this to be a line of grass. So what better way than to just line up your images? You can always manipulate photopolymer. It's super duper easy. I did cut around the tips. Now I want to show you something. I left some white around there. This was a little persnickety because of the blades of grass, but you know what? I'm just going to remind you, it's one of the first things we learn when we are kids and we go to school is how to cut, right? I think as paper crafters, we get really spoiled. We want to die in a punch for everything. And there just simply isn't. It's not a perfect world, but super cute and super easy. And wait till you see what we do with it. Now, remember I talked to you about this punch? Sold out. And many of you are like, no way. Now, what are we going to do? If I can't get the punch, do I want the stamp set? And my answer to you is absolutely yes. So I'm going to give you a couple cutting tips. Let me move down just a little bit here and let's talk about that. A lot of people are nervous about fussy cutting because they're worried that it's not going to be perfect all the way around. And they're also worried that it's going to be, you know, distorting the image, which is very, very common. So tip number one, you always want to leave some cardstock between the outline of the stamp and the paper. Okay, so watch. We're going to pretend I colored the whole thing. I've got one already done for you. And I'm just going to follow the outline. Do you see how I'm leaving a little bit of paper? By no means is it even. I am going to turn the paper and not the scissors. I don't know about you, but contortionist cutting is never easy. That always means that there's going to be lots and lots of errors. So I'm going to come right around the ears. Look at that's a little bit broader. That's okay. I don't know about you, but if you've ever used a die or a punch and you haven't secured it in place just right, you have areas that are a little bit wider on one side than the other, right? So don't worry. You just want to make sure that you don't compromise the stamp line. Again, look how I'm turning the paper to go around that little bunny tail. I'm maneuvering those little curved lines. Now let's talk about this. First of all, I cut away excess to make my life easy. Next, we're going to come right across here to ground this because this area right here is straight. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to curve here and I'm turning the paper. Turn, turn, turn. Literally, we did this with my talking and under a minute. You can do this. You don't need a punch for everything. And this is one of those stamp sets that works fine without it. So here is my bunny. Isn't that adorable? And here are my eggs. And here is my grass. Now we talked about this. The very first thing I want to do here is I'm going to put these together because then we're going to work on this double gatefold with that partial die cut. I like to build first here on my silicone craft sheet, especially if all these images are going to be clumped together. By having one piece of paper to deal with, it makes it a lot easier than trying to assemble three small pieces. That's another great tip for you. So I know that I want my eggs to be down here. Now, if you are very precise with your adhesive, you can certainly go ahead and use that. Or perhaps you like liquid glue. So this is the multi-purpose liquid glue that is sold in my online store. Love it. 
It dries quickly and it's very, very strong. I love this because I store it in here, which means the tip is always gonna have the glue at the top. You're gonna to be able to find this little holder in my craft room favorites. But I found that this tip was often not small enough, especially for things like this. So I wanna introduce you to this. This is the Precision Tip Glue Applicator. This is linked for you in my craft room favorites. It has been a game changer. All I did was put this glue inside of here. Now this is rather thick. You're gonna unscrew this, you're gonna glue it. You're gonna put glue in and tap until you get all the glue in. This is the same bottle I filled more than two years ago. It has a silicone lid on it so it doesn't dry out. The rubber band is to help hold that little cap in place if I'm doing a whole bunch of gluing. I'm gonna shake that glue down. Remember I told you it's thick. So I'm gonna just get an idea once again. Let's use that take your pick tool. I love that putty tip. And let's get an idea on where we want this. So I want some of those eggs to hang off just a little bit. So I'm gonna put glue here at the top. I love this precision tip. I can actually drag the needle right on the paper, which makes it nice and thin, which means I don't have to worry about all kinds of goo kind of falling out. And then we're gonna tack that here like so. Then we're gonna take our grass and we're gonna add it here. This is where this applicator comes in like a champ. So I'm gonna go right across here. I don't need to cover every single blade of grass because like I said, this is super duper strong. This also allows me an opportunity to cut away any excess outside of the image I'm assembling. This is a wonderful tip if you're doing floral bouquets or perhaps you're doing a whole abstract of leaves and ferns because sometimes they're just not where you want them. If you assemble it here on the silicone craft sheet first where no adhesive or glue will stick, you'll have one piece to work with that makes it so much easier. Now what I'm going to do, as you can see, I've got some of those eggs showing. I'm gonna bring in my sticky scissors. So I dedicate a pair of scissors here in the studio for those sticky projects because I don't wanna gunk up the goo ones. So there we go, we've got one image now. Let's talk about this. No one ever likes a yucky tip. So just squeeze it through the silicone craft sheet, dry that off, that's all it does, it just wipes off the excess. And then you can go ahead and just recap that. You wanna make sure that you store this vertically. I'm telling you, if you buy that, you're gonna absolutely love it. Now we have one piece to work with. Isn't that easier than trying to put all three pieces on together? All right, here comes the fun part. We're gonna come back to this. For this card, I decided to go this way. Keep in mind that card orientation can change everything. So if you want yours to go this way, you can, but today I'm gonna to go in a different direction. While we're here, let's go ahead and let's get that inside done. I did do this ahead of time because that's real simple. Those cutting dimensions are for you inside that project sheet. I stamped a greeting from a different stamp set because why not mix and match? You own them, right? Scrap of designer series paper is going to make sense in just a moment. Let's come back over here to the silicone craft sheet and I'm gonna use my adhesive and we're gonna go in the four corners. This is the Stampin' Seal Plus. It is extremely strong, so I don't need to cover every inch of my paper. This is a very narrow margin, and the reason I did that in your project sheet is in case you just have a little boo-boo here, here or here, it's going to cover it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close these. You can stamp, you can add designer paper, or you can do whatever you want. I'm choosing designer paper. Make sure if yours has a, pa has a pattern that they're going in the right direction. Ask me how I know. I did that on one of my first cards. So we've got some adhesive here and I'm looking and this comes from Happy Forest and look at that. I made it too big. All right, let's bring in that trimmer. All right, you're gonna yell at me. One of you is gonna say, you are not putting that in your trimmer with adhesive on it. And my answer is, uh, yes, I am. This should be two inches and I'm gonna cut. Now, I know it's a little bit sticky, but I know I'm cutting off only a little bit. Now, let's talk about this because I know one of you just went into shriek mode. If you ever have to do this, and come on, if you've paper crafted for more than five minutes, you probably have had to do this. Let me give you a tip. If you have a lot of adhesive here on the inside of this clear cutting track, and I'm talking about the inside, the printing is on the outside, you can take a Q-tip with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and very carefully just remove the sticky spots. To be honest with you, if I get it right away, I can get it right off. 
but we all make mistakes, right? I cut that a little bit too big for this project, so I wanted to fix it. I do know what's right in your project sheet. So again, with that direction going the right way, there's that nice border. And now we're gonna do the same thing. So I wanna make sure these are going in the right direction as well. My leaves are going to the right and we'll do the same thing down here. Now let's talk about this flap. Some of you are really gutsy and I love that. So you'll probably take your die and you'll die cut another piece of designer series paper. And here's a tip for you. The die often leaves an indentation around the inside of where it's die cut. Normal because of the simple fact that it leaves a groove from the cutting. Oh, Roxana, I see your comment. Goo gone on your paper trimmer even better because it's citrus based. I use that on all my scissors here in the studio. I absolutely love it. I have that linked for you too in my craft room favorites. But tonight I decided I didn't wanna do that. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna open this up flat and I'm gonna bring back in my ink pad. In that stamp set, it has the greeting, Happy Easter. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ink that up. I'm checking to make sure it's inked well, trying to keep my head out of your camera view. And there we go, we've got our words here. If you have a light colored cardstock, you have the opportunity to actually stamp right on top. Obviously, if you had a busy designer series paper, that would be something you would have to eliminate. Now I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna bring in the same color ink pad as the cardstock. Now this is the beauty of Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. The ink matches the cardstock, that matches the markers, that matches the embellishments. You can just go crazy. So I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna bring in a sponge dauber. Now I'm reaching behind me and I wanna grab my grid paper. So I have a little scratch paper here off to the side. Your finger goes up inside of these and unlike a blending brush, this is going to give you precise areas for you to place colors. A blending brush is broader, even the minis, and this works perfect for this technique. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add color to the dauber. I'm gonna dab a little bit off. And the reason I do that is I know that the ink is gonna be quite concentrated on here and I wanna be able to control the coverage. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open up that flap and I am going to brush around the edges. Now the reason I like this is because it's gonna add a little depth to the scallop without changing the color, which means that my focal point of that bunny is still gonna be all the rage, right? It's not gonna be taken away. To make sure that you have some cohesiveness, close this, and then we're gonna do the exact same thing now around this edge. Sometimes I've even taken my dauber on white cardstock and added extra color, and you can certainly do that. If you want to, you wanna make sure that you're working half on the paper, half off the paper, so you have a nice blended look without harsh lines. And here's another great tip for you about the sponge dauber. It makes the most perfect polka dots. So these come in a five pack. You're gonna absolutely love them. They're in my online store for you. All right, let's add that bunny and I can't wait to show you the rest of these cards. Now you might be looking at this saying, ooh, Lisa, it's too long. Yes, I did that on purpose. So let's flip this over. All one piece now is gonna make it super easy for us to use. We've got dimensionals here. Now these larger ones are gonna fit really well in these broad areas. And I also use them to double secure my pieces. So where I've glued it, I go ahead and I use those to my advantage. Let's go ahead and put another one here and another one here. I want this well balanced for mailing. I'm gonna bring in the mini dimensionals. Love that they're pre-cut and I don't have to gunk up my scissors. But the good news is, is if you wanna gunk up your scissors for these little areas here, you absolutely can, and we're gonna talk about that. Because I know that this strip is a little bit too long, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about card surgery. Sometimes we put these in places we don't need them, don't we? And then we end up trying to rip them off because they show from the inside of the card. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tip that I've been using, gosh, for many, many years. Close your gatefold, close your flap. I'm gonna work this near the bottom because that's where my, my grass line. And you're gonna recall that I said that the grass was going to be too long. Open up your gatefold. This is going to be your guide. Had I put dimensionals here, I would have to cut them off, right? So I'm just gonna follow the edge of my label and just cut off my excess. Now I'm gonna look here and I can see I've got a little bit much. So I've closed the card to make it easier for me to navigate you know what? I really don't need a whole bunch to take off, do I? So let's just cut down here like this. There we go. Now let's talk about this. You don't want any loose ends here, otherwise you're gonna have a problem getting this in and out of the envelope, right? Especially for the person receiving it. 
So here's where card surgery comes in. Since we used a dimensional the first time, we're going to want to make sure we have that same elevation here. So I'm going to go ahead and take one of my full size dimensionals. I've removed that paper backing already. So now it's sticky on both sides. This paper piercing tool attachment on this take your pick tool, I cannot live without it. Right up underneath it, I'm making sure that it can't be seen and I'm going to tack that in place. If ever you place a glue dot or a dimensional and you can see it and it's bugging you, take that tool and give that foam or that glue dot a little bit of a push and that's going to reposition it and hide it behind your card. Now you know I can't do too many things straight and of course this is going to have to be conditioned just a tad because it's brand new. But I'm going to bring in the classic matte dots because I want to play up a little bit of white on here but wait till you see the other color and the other cards that I have for you. Several of those are fun folds too. So I've got one of my white ones. They have glue, um, glue dots are already on the back. Gotta love that. So let's go here and here. And then I'm gonna take one more and I wanna draw my eye up. So let's work here towards that greeting. And then again, you're gonna wanna go over this with your bone folder. This turns out to be a four and a quarter by four and a quarter card. When it's closed, it fits in a standard A2 envelope. You'll have a little bit of extra room, but don't you worry, it's gonna be fine. It's not too thick for standard mail. But isn't this adorable? There's that extra sliver of designer series paper because I didn't have the art to throw it away. All right, so here's the one we made together, but I have another one for you that I made. Exact same layout to this one. I'm gonna hold it closed because I didn't score it. And here it is. This is in Fresh Freesia. This paper is from Butterfly Kisses. Grab it because I have a feeling it'll probably be retired. Very typical with Stampin' Up! when new catalogs come out. They change all the designer papers. I use the papers as a guide to decide what colors to make these. Exact same bunny, but you know what? I got one more little tip for you. Look at this. Do you know what this is? I took a little tiny piece of cotton ball. There's that precision glue tip applicator again. You gotta love it. And I tore off a little tiny bit and I'm gonna stick it right here on top of that tail. And here comes that take your pick tool once again. I am able to push through the cotton right down on the table and I'm going to push that into place and connect the cotton to the glue. And like I said, it's very, very strong and it dries very, very quickly. And I'm also using it to help shape it to the shape of the stamp. Now when they get it, oh my gosh, it's so darn cute. All right, so this one doesn't have the tail, but this one does. Again, you are gonna love the stamp set, but wait till you see what else you can do. So let me push these off to the side and let's talk about these next cards. Now, these cards that I'm going to show you are all part of this month's online card class. Now, here is the first one. Same bunny that we just did on these cards. So I already showed you we can fussy cut it. All right. Any label of your choice or you can go ahead and fussy cut it and put it right on your designer series paper. You can participate in this month's online card class by placing a $50 product order before shipping and tax using my exclusive card class host code. This host code is only available in the class for a total of four days. But here's the best part. You are going to get a full length video so you can stamp right along with me from home. I'm going to include all the tips like you see in all my normal videos. I'm going to give you tips on making your images look like you can literally touch them and feel a velvet appearance. I'm going to give you tips on using alcohol based markers on assembly so that you can make really adorable and quick cards change up the theme, right? All right, here comes the next one. There's fun fold number one. My card class includes four cards. These two are fun folds. I've got two others for you as well. But this expands, which is super fun. Do you see the stamping in the center? I'm going to give you all kinds of tips for alignment. And then here on the back side, yep, you got your room to add your sentiment or of course, add a signed message. So this is number two. In addition to the full length video, you are also going to receive a 16 page color PDF tutorial for all the cards. There are multiple pictures for all four cards I'm going to share with you. Step by step instructions on how to assemble it and put it together because some of you like to read and some of you like to watch. There's also supply list and cutting dimensions. Oh, I couldn't resist a baby card. So I used the stamp set and I just changed up the theme. This greeting is inside that stamp set. So like I said, there are other things in here that you can use well beyond Easter. 
And of course, I'm in grandma mode because I'm going to be a grandma here in just eight short weeks. So there's my baby card. Any label can do. You'll find a complete list of supplies that I used for these four cards here for this month's online card class on my website. Go over to my website and click on online events and then you'll see card class. And then you can get all the information there. You do not have to buy what I used. You can use whatever you want. Again, you'll know that these are the only two that I fussy cut. These, we didn't do any cutting at all. So you don't have to have the punch. The stamp set is going to be timeless. You're going to use it every single year. Again, lots of tips in that video. So here are the four cards for this month's online card class. Four day ordering period only. These was the, this was the card I shared with you tonight. And I'm going to put the host code for card class right here up on the screen for you so that you can see it. Again, it's today, March 8th through Saturday, which is March 11th, 2023 only. Now, some of you always ask me, I want just the PDF tutorial. Can I get that? And the answer is yes. Perhaps you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you don't want to place an order with me, of course. You can go over to my website under Shop PDF Tutorials, and I have this there for you. You'll get all 16 pages. I only charge $1 per page, and that includes all the photos, cutting dimensions, step-by-step -step instructions, all the information's there for you. We would absolutely love to share that with you. Please keep in mind, the PDF tutorial does not include the video. That is exclusive to the class. All right, now there's a few things that you need to know about for next week, but before we do that, I also wanna make sure that I talk to you about this. If you haven't already heard about it, Stamp Studio Memberships has gone off with a bang. Thank you to so many of you that have signed up. But so many of you keep emailing me saying, how do I join, what is it? Well, guess what? For $5 a month, you will get a fresh tutorial from me every Monday morning at 9 a.m. Sounds too good to be true. $9 for the whole month. I designed the cards specifically for the membership. They are not shared anywhere else. In addition to that, guess what? You've got full reign to do whatever you want with them. You can use them as inspiration. You can use them for classes, for workshops. You can copy them. You can redistribute them. You can use them for business use. You can sell the cards you make copying them. Many of you teach classes at assisted living facilities or at schools with teachers after hours, and you love to have the tutorial for them to follow along with the card they're making. This is for you. And it doesn't matter what country you live in. So $5 a month, all the information is on my website. Just click on memberships in the red menu bar. Now, while you're over on my website, make sure, oh, look at that. I forgot to take the comment off from the last time. We're gonna do Q and A. That's what this is all about. I'm grabbing my mouse, bear with me here. We answered this question last time. So we're gonna answer more tonight. If you wanna stick around for the live Q and A, we're gonna do that at the end. Type in a Q and a colon in your question. I'll be able to sort those and put those here on the screen. While you're on my website, make sure you check out that PDF tutorial library and scroll all the way to the bottom and click subscribe. If you do that, I'll add you to my free weekly e-newsletter and there you'll get a tutorial not shared on any of my other platforms that is exclusive to the newsletter. We would love to include you. It's no frills. All right, here's some important news for you. Now, if you're typing in your questions, get those going now next week. Okay, we're going to share some fun personal news with you. As I mentioned, Gina is getting ready to have her baby in just eight short weeks. It's come so quickly already. Saturday, we are having a baby shower for her, which means we're having lots of family and friends come into town. Oh, did I say nine? Gina's correcting me. Five dollars per month, not nine. I don't know what I'm thinking. It is five dollars per month on the membership. Thank you, Gina. So we have a ton of family and friends coming in starting on Friday. They will be here clear until Tuesday morning. So on Monday, which is the next live stream date, which would be on March 13th, I'm thinking of the date. I'm not going to be live with you and neither will Gina, but I've got a special YouTube premiere scheduled for you. It is recorded, but guess what? It's going to be just like this. It's going to feel like I'm live. There will not be moderating. You're not gonna wanna miss this card. All I'm gonna tell you is it's interactive and it swivels. So you want to be here to see it. 
I know that you're going to be here to chat and interact with each other. All the live chat features are still there. I hope that you can be there. We are going to celebrate this with family and friends, so we won't be able to be here next Monday, but we've got that premiere for you, so I hope you'll join us. I will be back live, and Gina will be back in, live in the chat on the following Monday, which is the 20th. So I am coming back. I'm just taking that one Monday to make a premiere for you so that we can enjoy this special time together. I knew that you would understand. All right, so mark your calendar so that you don't miss out on next week's card, and then I'll be live with you again on the 20th. All right, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, then the word all next to the bell. This way YouTube will send you reminders when I'm live. And if you would, hit that thumbs up. That helps me so much here on YouTube. All right, I'm gonna grab that mouse once again and we're gonna look at your questions. I'll be able to answer those for you. If you need to leave right now, I am so glad you joined me tonight. I hope that you've enjoyed the inspiration that I've shared here in the studio this evening. And I look forward to seeing you with me next time. All right, this is the informal part. Let me grab that mouse and I'm gonna type in the cute so I can sort out your questions. And let's see what we got there. Now there is a delay between when you type and when I see it. And so far, I don't see any questions just yet, but I'll give you a second to catch up with me. Live streaming, there's always a delay. You may notice that sometimes if you and your husband are watching or you and your significant other, the same show in different rooms, right? They're either ahead of you or behind you. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave your comments here so that we can look at those and I can answer them for you here during the live stream. All right, just gonna refilter that. And it says to check comments. You know what? I don't see a single question here tonight. I am going to scroll really quick. It could just be the software for the streaming. So I'm just going to scroll to make sure that I don't miss any. So many of you are well wishes for Gina and the shower. We are really looking forward to it. We have a lot of fun things planned. We have a lot of family and friends coming into town. So we're excited about it. All right, one more time. I'm just going to check to make sure if there are any questions, I will ask those live. And oh, I do. I don't see any. No, I'm scrolling. I don't see a single one. No problem. I look forward to having you join me again next week for the YouTube special premiere. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Thanks again.